Our lesson for today is all about applying theorems on triangle inequalities. In the previous lesson, we have uh, we just learned how to how the theorems on triangle inequalities can help us understand the relationship between the sides and angles in one or in two triangles. In this section, we will know how these theorems of triangle inequalities be applied in different instances to prove the existence of inequalities in triangles. Let's discuss first the inequalities in one triangle. So for theorem 1, if one side of a triangle is longer than a second side, then the angle opposite the first side is larger than the angle opposite the second side. The longest side is opposite the largest angle, while the shortest side is opposite the smallest angle. For our example, let's order the angles in each triangle from smallest to largest. From number 1, so if we're going to arrange this, we have this, the smallest angle is angle F because the opposite side is 13. Next to angle F is angle T because the, uh, the next to 13 cm side is 18 cm. And the largest angle is angle W because the opposite side to it is 20 cm. Next for number 2, if we arrange the, uh, if we arrange the angles from smallest to, great to largest, the smallest angle is angle F because the opposite side to it is 13 cm. Next to angle F is angle U because next to 13 is 15 cm. And the last largest angle is angle N because it is uh, the largest side is 25 cm. Next, let's proceed to theorem 2. If one angle of a triangle is larger than the second angle, then the side opposite the first angle is longer than the side opposite the second angle. The largest angle is opposite the longest side, while the smallest angle is opposite the shortest side. Let's take have an example. Let's find the measure of the missing angles to name the shortest and longest sides for each triangle. So from here, we will have our solution. So, based on our figure, we need to add the degree measure of angle A plus the degree measure of angle I plus the degree measure of angle D. So if we are going to add those three angles, that is equivalent to 180 degrees. Why? Because we all know that the interior angles of one triangle is equal to 180 degrees. And after, and after this, let's substitute the value of the following degree angle. So for our angle A, we have x plus 15 degrees, plus 90 degrees, which is the angle I, and plus 2x degrees, which is the, value, uh, the degree measure of angle D, is equal to 180 degrees. And after this, let's combine similar terms. So we have x plus 15 plus 90 plus 2x. So we, if we're going to combine similar terms, x plus 2x is equal to 3x. And 15 plus 90 is equal to 105. So we have 3x plus 105 is equal to 180 degrees. And after this, let's transpose 105 to the right side because we need to combine similar terms. So we have now 3x is equal to 180 degrees and from positive 105, we have negative 105. Next, so 180 minus 105, we have now 75. So let's bring down 3x is equal to 75, which is the difference of 180 and 105. And after this, let's apply the div division property of equality by dividing both sides by 3. So 3x divided by 3 is x and 75 divided by 3 is 25. So the value of our x now is 25. Now, to identify the shortest side and the longest side, we need to substitute the value of x to the degree measure of angle A and angle D. 
So for, for our for our degree measure of angle A, the degree measure of angle A is equal to x plus 15. So if we substitute the value of x, which is 25, so we have 25 plus 15. And the degree measure of angle A is equal to 40 degrees. Next, for the degree measure of angle D, which is 2x degrees, so let's substitute the value of x, which is 25, so we will have now 2 times 25. 2 times 25 is 50. So the degree measure of angle D is equal to 50 degrees. Now, we already now have the degree measure of the three angles. Again, for angle A now, the degree measure is 40 degrees, the degree measure of angle D is 50 degrees, and the degree measure of angle I is 90 degrees. Now, based on the figure, if we look, if we need to look for the shortest side, we need to look for the smallest angle. So the smallest angle is angle A. And the side opposite to it is line segment ID. So therefore, line segment ID is the shortest side. Next, let's proceed for the longest side. To find the longest side, we need to find first the angle or we need to find first the largest angle. And the largest angle is angle I, which is 90 degrees. And to find the longest side, so that is the opposite of the largest angle, so which is line segment AD. So the longest side is line segment AD. Now, let's proceed for our second example. In this example, we have two remote interior angles and exterior angle. We all know that if we add the two in, uh, if we add the two remote interior angles, that is equal to the degree measure of our exterior angle. So for this, our, our solution will be remote interior angle plus remote interior angle is equal to exterior angle. So if we substitute the value, we will have x plus x plus 5, which is the degree measures of our two remote interior angles, is equal to 125 degrees which is the degree measure of our exterior angle. And if we rewrite this, it will become x plus x plus 5 is equal to 125. And after this, let's combine similar terms. x plus x is equal to 2x plus 5 is equal to 125. And after that, let's transpose positive 5 to the right side and it will become negative 5. So it will become 2x is equal to 125 minus 5 and 125 minus 5 is equal to 120 and after this let's apply the division property of equality let's divide both sides by 2 so 2x divided by 2 is x and 120 divided by 2 is 60 so the value of our x is 60 now from this, let's find now the degree measure of angle W and angle A. So from here, let's find first the degree measure of angle W. Since the degree measure of angle W is equal to x and the value of our x is 60, let's substitute the value of x which is 60. So, the degree measure of angle W is equal to 60 degrees. Now, so from this, from angle A, the degree measure of angle A is equal to x plus 5. Again, let's substitute the value of x to 60. So, we'll have now 60 plus 5. So, 60 plus 5 is equal to 65. Therefore, the degree measure of angle A it's equal to 65 degrees. Now, we need to find we need all uh, we need also to find the degree measure of angle E or angle AEW. Since angle AEW is supplement to our ex exterior angle which is 125 degrees, so the degree measure of angle AEW or angle E is 55 degrees. 
So now from the uh, from this example, let's find now the uh, our shortest side. Which among the three angles have the smallest angle? The smallest angle is angle E. And the side opposite to it is line segment AW. So therefore, our shortest side is line segment AW. Next, let's find out our longest side. Which among the three angles have the largest angle? The answer is angle A. And the side opposite to it is line segment EW. So therefore, our longest side is line segment EW. Now, let's proceed to our theorem 3. In any triangle, the sum of the lengths of any two of its sides is greater than the length of its third side. Or third side. Let's take have an example. Two sides of a triangle measures 11 and 8 respectively. Find the range of the, of the possible measures of the third side. For our step 1, let X be the representation of the third side. Step 2, let's apply the triangle inequality theorem. So from here, let's add 11 and 8. So 11 plus 8 is 19. And 19 is greater than x. Now, for another inequality, so 8 plus x is greater than 11. And let's suppose positive 8 to the right side, it will become negative 8. So x is greater than 11 minus 8 is 3. So x is greater than 3. Now, for our step 3, rewriting 19 is greater than x and x is greater than 3, it will become now 3 is less than x is less than 19. For our shortcut method, notice that the difference of 11 and 8 is 3 and the sum of 11 and 8 is 19. So, you can do this shortcut. So, 3 is less than x is less than 19. Next, for our another example, the length of line segment RC and line segment CL are 14 cm and 11 cm respectively. What is the range of the values of line segment LR? Now, let's use the shortcut method. So, 14 cm minus 11 cm is equal to 3 cm. And 14 plus 11 cm is equal to 25 cm. Now, we can write now our inequality as 3 cm is less than line segment LR is less than 25 cm. That is theorem 3. Now, let's proceed to our theorem 4, which is the exterior angle inequality theorem. The measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of either of the two remote interior angles. For example, Use the exterior angle inequality theorem to list all angles that satisfy the given condition. For number 1, what are the angles less than the degree measure of angle 4? Answer, angle 2 and angle 3. By exterior angle inequality theorem, the remote interior angles which is angle 2 and angle 3 are less than the exterior angle which is angle 4. Next, what are the angles greater than the degree measure of angle 2? The answer, angle 4 and angle 5. By exterior angle inequality theorem, the interior angles which is anger or which are angle 4 and angle 5 are greater than the remote interior angle which is angle 2. Now, that is the inequalities in one triangle all about. Let's proceed to the inequalities in two triangles. So for our theorem 5, which is the hinge theorem, if two sides of a triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle and the included angle of the first is larger than the included angle of the second, then the third side of the first triangle is longer than the third side of the second triangle. 
may also be referred to as the SAS inequality theorem. So to easily understand, let's take have an example. So let's write an inequality or set of inequalities to describe the possible values for x. Given line segment AR is congruent to line segment EC and line segment RE is equal to 18 and line segment CA is equal to 16 and the degree measure of angle EAR is 4x minus 4 degrees and the degree measure of angle AEC is equal to 20 degrees. For our solution, let's solve 4x minus 4 is greater than 20. So we have, four, uh, let's apply uh, from this, let's apply the addition property of equality so that we can cancel negative 4. So it will become negative 4 minus 4 plus 4 is greater than 20 plus 4. Next, so uh, we can cancel now negative 4 and positive 4. So bring down 4x and 20 plus 4 is 24. So we have now 4x is greater than 24. And after this, let's apply the division property of equality by dividing both sides by 4. So 4x divided by 4 is x and 24 divided by 4 is 6. So we have x is greater than 6. Next inequality, let's solve 4x minus 4 is less than 180. So we have now, again from this, let's apply also the addition property of equality by, the, uh, by adding both sides by 4. So we will have now 4x minus 4 plus 4 is less than 180 plus 4. So we can cancel now negative 4 and 4. And 180 plus 4 is 184. So we will have now 4x is less than 184. And after this, let's apply the division property of equality by dividing both sides by 4. So 4x divided by 4 is x and 184 divided by 4 is 46. Now, we have two inequalities now which is x is greater than 6 and x is less than 46. Now, let's proceed to our theorem 6, which is the converse of Hinge theorem. If two sides of a triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle, and the third side of the first is longer than the third side of the second, then the included angle in the first triangle is greater than the included angle in the second triangle, may also be referred to as the SSS inequality theorem. For example, Write an inequality or set of inequalities to describe the possible values for x. For our given, we have line segment AN is congruent to line segment GN. Line segment RN is congruent to line segment EN. Line segment RA is equal to 8x minus 4. And line segment EG is equal to 28. For our solution, so let's solve 8x minus 4 is greater than 28. Let's apply the addition property of equality by adding both sides by positive 4 so that we can cancel negative 4. So we will have now 8x minus 4 plus 4 is greater than 28 plus 4. And we can cancel now negative 4 and 4. So 28 plus 4 is 32. So we have now 8x is greater than 32. After this, let's apply the division property of equality by dividing both sides by 8. So 8x divided by 8 is x and 32 divided by 8 is 4. So we will have now x is greater than 4. That is uh, inequalities in two triangles all about. Now, I hope you understand our lesson for today which is the applying theorems on triangle inequalities. Thank you for watching.